Today's Mass is offered for Patrick Miller. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man for the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Abel became a keeper of flocks, and Cain a tiller of the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, while Abel, for his part, brought one of the best firstlings of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel for his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not. Cain greatly resented this and was crestfallen. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you do well, you can hold up your head, but if not, Sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is towards you, yet you can be his master. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out in the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He answered, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord then said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. Therefore you shall be banned from the soil that opens its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer give you its produce. You shall become a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is too great for me to bear. Since you have now banished me from the soil, I must avoid your presence and become a restless wanderer on the earth. Anyone may kill me at sight. Not so, said the Lord. If anyone kills Cain, Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. So the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone should kill him at sight. Adam again had relations with his wife, and she gave birth to a son who they called Seth. God has granted me more offspring in place of Abel, she said, because Cain slew him. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, offer to God a sacrifice of praise. 
God the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, but your birth offerings are before me always. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. You sit speaking against your brother, against your mother's son, you spread rumors. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. Offer of the, the sacrifice of praise. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees came forward and began to argue with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. He sighed from the depth of his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Amen, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Then he left them, got into the boat again, and went off to the other shore. The Gospel of the Lord. We have begun in the first readings, first sets of readings, the book of Genesis, the beginnings. And today we hear of the first bloodshed the first murder, the first killing. Cain killed Abel out of resentment, out of jealousy, out of his rage. But we are consoled that if we fast forward to the end of the book of Genesis, we find a totally different story. A reversal. The book of Genesis begins with resentment and murder and killing. But those of you who know your Bible pretty well know that Genesis ends not with brother killing brother, but brothers being reconciled with a brother. That's the story of Joseph if you all remember. And that gives us great hope. It's a glimmer of hope of what God is doing to his people after the fall, teaching his people how to love, how to forgive, how to reconcile with one another. And so we hear, and then we have in today's gospel, the Pharisees who kind of come to Jesus with the same resentment that Cain had in the first reading. The same kind of jealousy because they were, you know, higher and better than everyone else. And now this Jesus comes on stage and, you know, who, what do we make of this man? You know, he's disturbing our whole uh, order of things, our whole law. And people are coming to him and following him. And so they press Jesus, and they test Jesus. And it says in the Gospel, they argue with Jesus. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I find myself in arguments sometimes with other people who have questions about the faith. Um, you know, not, uh, not very verbal, but, it, you know, they come. And some of them, some people have a genuine concern and want to be informed. You know, what is this about your Catholic faith? You know, what is this about Mary? What is this about, you know, the Eucharist? You know, what is this about uh, priestly celibacy? But oftentimes, those questions are asked out of resentment and anger. And we often encounter people of this sort because they seek a sign. They want to believe. They seek a miracle, just like the Pharisees. And the thing is that sometimes people's hearts can be so hardened and bitter that they're blinded to even seeing the truth, to seeing the miracles. And if we remember, okay, now we are in Mark, we're in the eighth chapter of Mark, and all those, all of you who have been attending daily Mass and keeping up with your Mass daily readings in the Gospel, we have heard so many miracles so far that Jesus has performed in the Gospel. From the first one of driving out a demon, to healing many who were sick, and then eventually, in a couple of days, we'll hear of Jesus opening the eyes of a blind man. But these Pharisees, they were the blind ones. They were the blind ones because they could not see any of those miracles. None of those miracles that Jesus performed was enough for them. And Jesus said, no sign will be given to this generation because no sign will be enough. And so, what about us? How many times in our lives do we say to ourselves, if only God gave me a sign, if only God just revealed himself, it would be easier, I would put my whole heart into it, I would truly believe. Okay, that's, that's kind of, you know, running along with the Pharisees today. The same sort of attitude. But the thing is, my friends, each and every one of us has those miracles and signs already in our lives. They're before us all the time. Every day in every aspect of your life. But do you have the eyes opened? Do you have your heart opened to see those miracles in the way that God works in your life to speak to you, to heal you, and to reconcile you back to himself? And so the only sign that we should seek is the sign of the cross, the sign of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was the full and total divine and public revelation to the world, God revealing himself. Christ's passion, death, and resurrection, and ascension into heaven, and what he has done for us, even now, through the church, through the sacramental signs and in this Holy Eucharist we will encounter him because we believe and he will change us and reconcile us to one another and to himself. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him. Through Christ our Lord, through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that all who believe in him may not perish but may have eternal life.
I will now offer the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a good day, everyone.